Hello everyone. Welcome to our PMP exam question and answer solving session for February. So just like the previous months, in today's session, we'll be solving some medium to high difficulty level PMP exam questions very similar to your actual exam. Also, if you have not watched the previous Q&A sessions, I would highly encourage you to check them out, okay? I'm sure that you will find them immensely helpful for your PMP exam preparation. I will link the entire playlist in the description section of this video. Also, if you are preparing for your PMP exam in 2024, I would recommend that you register for my free webinar for the PMP exam preparation, okay? It's a detailed webinar which I host every week where I take students like you through the basic steps of preparing for the PMP exam successfully, okay? So I have multiple slots that are available every week. So feel free to choose from the slot that works best for you, okay? The link will be in the description section of this video. In addition to this, you can download this free ebook, which is the 10 tips to pass the PMP exam in 2024 from my website as well, okay? So all these resources are free resources to help you kickstart your PMP exam preparation in 2024. 24. I'll be providing all the links in the description section of this video. So make sure you check them out. Now, if you are preparing for the PMP exam, you can use today's class to assess how well you are prepared for the exam. Okay. So out of the five questions that we'll be solving today, the target would be to get all the five out of five questions correct, right? However, the minimum expectation is that you should get at least four out of the five questions correct to consider yourself fairly well prepared for the PMP exam. Now, anything less than that, you might need a bit more preparation, okay? So give this video a like, get a pen and a paper, and let's get started with question number one. Right, so question number one, guys, please read the question and try to answer it before we solve this together, okay? So the drill will remain the same as per the previous months. There are four options to select from. Read the question, take a best shot at it, and then we'll solve this together. You can pause the video here if you wish to. Right, so let's get started. During a weekly sprint review meeting, one of the members within the product development team expresses concerns about the way user stories were documented for a feature upgrade. Now, if you are preparing for the PMP exam, guys, and you know that, okay, Agile is a very important topic for the entirety of the syllabus of the PMP exam, you might be definitely knowing what is a user story, what is a feature upgrade, etc., etc. okay? Now, if you don't know these terms, I would recommend that you go back and start reading textbooks and articles regarding Agile methodology of project management. There are a few videos as well, which I have created on this topic. So I will link these videos on the screen right now. So you can watch those videos as well to have the basic understanding, okay? But mind it guys, for the PMP exam, Agile is a very, very, very critical topic. And these terms such as user stories and feature upgrades should be something which are at your fingertips, okay? Right, so let's carry on. The project manager was not expecting this since the team is in the middle of a sprint. Okay, so another agile ceremony sprint right now and the user stories were aligned with the product development team previously. Okay, so what is happening is basically during a sprint review meeting, one of the members from the product development team has come back and said that, look, I'm not very happy with the way the user stories were documented in the feature upgrade, okay? Now, you as the project manager or let's say the product owner, you are confused that, look, your team were present during the time when this entire user story was getting documented for the sprint. And now during the execution stage of the sprint, you are coming back and telling us that, okay, you are having concerns right now is this the right thing to do not the right thing to do etc etc that is a different topic of discussion but let's stick to the scenario let's stick to the facts and let's see what the question is asking from us okay so what should you do as the project manager okay so there are four options provided so let's go through the options one by one option a update the impediment task board and continue with the meeting agenda okay now as a pmp exam aspirant you are expected to know what is a impediment task board okay so the impediment task board is sort of like a risk register but it is more for the agile type of projects okay so impediments means blockers or challenges or risks which the team highlights now that is typically displayed on a visual board where the team can go back and refer to it now this board can be a physical board in the location of the team where the team is situated or this board 
board can be a virtual board where people can go and update or review that board over a shared drive right but however the intent stays the same that the impediment task board is something that captures risks or challenges for a agile team okay so option a is saying that okay you as the project manager when one of your team members have raised a concern or a risk you just go and update the task board and continue with the meeting agenda now is this the right thing to do guys I don't think so right so if you have been following me for the previous month's videos you know that for a pmp style project manager it is very important to be a good listener to acknowledge the concerns and the risks your teams are highlighting the actions can come later and that might depend on the impact however it should not happen that someone in your team is expressing a risk you just go and update some document and then continue with the meeting agenda okay think how that person will feel that okay i have highlighted this risk to my project manager and all the best he or she can do is go and update some document right so in that sense this is an incorrect option guys okay so never select these type of options in your pmp exam that talks about a passive way of problem solving you should always think about looking for options that talks about active ways of problem solving let's look at option b option b says acknowledge the concern which is good that you are acknowledging it and facilitate the meeting agenda to explore possible resolutions okay so let's hold this option so what this option is saying that you acknowledge the concern of the team member and facilitate the meeting agenda now to discuss the concern now a red flag with this approach to note here is guys what is the meeting that you are in you are in a sprint review meeting okay now if you use this sprint review meeting to explore possible options for a risk that is highlighted what will basically happen to the review which was actually planned to take place right so probably this is not the correct answer but anyways let's hold this for now and let's see that okay whether we can find anything better option c acknowledge the concern and meet with the team member after the meeting to assess the risk okay so this is also a good option so it is saying that you acknowledge the concern as a settlement leader so that is good meet with the team member after the meeting okay so you are not sacrificing the original scope and intent of the sprint review meeting okay so you meet with the team member outside the meeting and then you assess the risks and see that okay if there is anything that could be done differently if there is anything that we can do differently from now on okay if there is really something that is substantial in terms of the risk that was highlighted by this team member or it is just a gap in understanding anything can happen right but that is the second leg of problem solving okay so the first leg of problem solving should be to acknowledge the risks continue the meeting that you are in and then meet with this person externally just to understand and assess the risk okay so this seems like the most probable option but anyways we have not evaluated option d so let's evaluate option d as well so this option says that provide a reminder to the entire team on the agile way of working and meeting etiquettes okay now that is incorrect guys okay so this is basically very random that uh, problem has been highlighted and all the best you can do as a project manager is to provide a reminder to the entire team of blah 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 or all the jargons like right? agile way of working meeting etiquettes etc etc okay so that is not something that is productive that is not something that is taking you even one step forward towards the problem solving okay so option d is definitely incorrect and i think on that note we can definitely eliminate option b as well because in option b you are acknowledging the concern okay but you are totally sacrificing the intent of the meeting so this person has basically hijacked your sprint review meeting and the sprint review meeting which was supposed to be a review of the backlog review of the challenges and the impediments that the team are facing with respect to this sprint and now the entire sprint review meeting has now become like a risk review meeting or a risk assessment meeting okay so that is not true so you as the project manager you are the captain of the ship so if the ship is going off track so if the ship is changing directions you should bring it back to match the basic intent or the basic idea with which the ship initially sailed off okay so the correct answer is definitely not option b and the correct answer to this question is option c which is to acknowledge the concern and meet with the team member after the meeting to assess the risk okay if you are preparing for your pmp exam guys i would suggest that you check out my pmp exam preparation courses on udemy all the courses are very highly rated amongst the students and many PMP aspirants like you have passed their PMP exam with the help of these courses. All the links will be provided in the description section of this video. And now let's move on to question number two. Right. So question number two, guys, 
The drill will remain the same. Please read the question and try to answer it before we solve this together. Note that this is a multi-select question, okay, where you need to select two options from the four options provided. So in your PMP exam for these type of questions, the question stem will definitely mention how many options you need to select, okay? Now, an important thing to note about multi-select question is there is no partial marking. So for example, in this question, if you are selecting one correct answer and one incorrect answer, then the overall assessment is still incorrect, okay? So to get the full marks out of this question, you need to select both the options which are correct, okay? So there is no partial marking that if you select one correct and one incorrect, you get 50%. If you select both the correct options, you get 100%. It's not like that. So it's a zero one relationship. You need to get both the options correct in these type of questions to be awarded the full marks, okay? So I'll pause here. Please read the question and solve it before we try this together. Right, so let's get started. The product owner needs involvement of the functional departments to identify, prioritize, and document strategic and operational objectives for a new product development. So a lot of things are happening here. So the product owner, let's say in an agile project, probably, okay, let's take that as a valid assumption that the product owner in an agile project needs involvement of the functional departments. Okay, so these departments could be quality, could be safety, could be product development, cyber security, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So these are the functional departments who does the normal operational work day in and day out. Okay, with the finished product. Product, okay now the question says that the product owner needs involvement of these people or let's say the managers who represent these functions to identify prioritize and document the strategic and operational objectives for a new product development right however there is a lack of expected participation from the functional managers during the requirements gathering sessions okay so these functional managers they are definitely some good stakeholders in the project but the project manager or the product owner is facing the problem that there is not enough participation from these functional managers during the requirements gathering exercise okay or let's say during the scope definition process broadly speaking in which which of the following ways can the product owner enable the expected participation right and you need to select two options now remember the problem statement of this question is the product owner needs to enable expected participation it's very important for you to understand that that what is the problem we are trying to solve we are trying to solve the problem that these stakeholders who are not engaged now should become engaged and to do that what are the things the product owner needs to do okay so that is the problem statement let's look at the options one by one okay option a use cultural awareness trainings very random guys very random right so using cultural awareness trainings it is uh, designed for the project team or for the project stakeholders or for the operational teams or for incoming interns in the company we don't know right cultural awareness is something which is very broad and basically this doesn't address or this doesn't give me confidence that doing a cultural awareness training will help the product owner to increase the expected participation, right? Suddenly your stakeholders become culturally aware and say that, oh, what we were doing was totally wrong. Now let's go and support the product owner. Uh, that's too far-fetched, right? So definitely option A is incorrect. Let's look at option B. Option B is demonstrate servant leadership via facilitation. Okay, this is a good option because what you are doing is you are facilitating and by facilitation means you can do one to one with the stakeholders to understand what the problems they are facing or let's say why they are not turning up in the meetings or why they are not participating in the meetings. Is there some kind of a motivational issue you need to solve? So these are all questions you need to ask when you are facilitating to solve a problem and you are demonstrating servant leadership at the same time. So option B looks like a good option. Let's park it for now. Option C arrange time box meetings okay now what are time box meetings guys again i'll go back to my basic premise that for the pmp exam you need to know these terms what are time box meetings what are sandboxes what are sprint reviews etc etc again i'll refer you to these videos on my youtube channel please go ahead and watch those it will give the basic understanding of agile which you need for your pmp exam now what are time box meetings guys so in a time box meeting the team rather than working until a goal is complete and measuring the overall time, the team actually stops working when the time limit is reached and evaluates what was accomplished. So for example, let's say my goal was to achieve a feature upgrade. Okay. Now this goal 
initially was an open-ended goal. Let's say I didn't know that whether I would be requiring like two weeks, three weeks or four weeks to complete this overall feature upgrade. Okay. So in a time box meeting or in a time box iteration, let's say what we do is in the time box meeting, we finalize that. Okay, look for this feature upgrade will only take three weeks. Let's give our best for this three weeks and let's try to come up with a product that is a minimum viable product, which is a workable product. And whatever we achieve within that three week time frame is the best possible scenario that we can develop for this product as a minimum viable product. Now in the next time box meeting, I can come back to this again and refine it even further. Okay. So these time box meetings are usually with the objective that the deliverable is a bit open ended, but you still need to come back with a minimum viable product for the client or for the customer. Okay. So that basically makes you to think within a time box and helps you expediting the project rather than going in a totally exploratory direction. Okay. Now, if you know this basic premise of time box meetings, you definitely know that answer C is incorrect, right? Because this is nowhere influencing the participation problem of the stakeholders. Now, in the time box meeting as well, you do not call your functional managers, right? Because the time box meeting is like a very focused meeting within the agile team. Okay. The functional managers doesn't have any role to play per se within a time box meeting. So arranging a time box meeting is really futile to solve this kind of a problem where the problem more lies with the motivational or the participation aspect of your functional managers. OK, so option C is definitely incorrect. Let's look at option D perform stakeholder engagement assessment. This is also a good option because you are doing the engagement assessment by engagement assessment. What we mean is you initially identify that. OK, for stakeholder X, I need this person to be at uh, awareness level or for this person, I need him to be at a information level or for this person, I need him to be at a let's say decision level. So you move that person across that uh, spectrum of being just aware to become actively engaged in a project and to to do that you need to do what you need to do to make that person work with that expectation right so please go back to your pmbo case and study the topic of stakeholder engagement assessment you will find a matrix in your pmbo cave which is called the stakeholder engagement assessment matrix and that matrix actually visually identifies the stakeholders initial engagement levels the stakeholders of final engagement levels and the gap between it and what you need to do to bridge that gap so this is a very good tool to solve these kind of engagement issues within your stakeholders. Okay, so option D is also correct. So definitely the correct answer to this question is option B, which is to demonstrate servant leadership via facilitation and option D, which is to perform a stakeholder engagement assessment. Okay, so the correct answer is option B and option D. Once you select these two options, you are choosing two options as per the question stem and you are awarded the full marks for this question. If you select option B only, or if you select option D only and you select either of A and C, you will not be awarded any marks for this question. Okay, so please keep that in mind. If you are liking the video, guys, please press the like button. Your support goes a long way to help this channel grow. Also, your likes and comments help me to understand that you value such educational content and motivates me to prepare more such videos like these to help you with your PMP exam. And now, Let's move on to question number three. OK, so question number three, guys, please read the question and try to answer it before we move forward. You can pause the video here if you wish to. This is a straightforward multiple option question where you need to select one option out of these four options provided. Right. So let's get started. A project manager is preparing for a project kickoff meeting that involves stakeholders and sponsors across four different countries, United States, United Kingdom, India and Japan. OK, since the participants are located across the globe, the project manager is assessing a suitable way to maximize participation and engagement. OK, so if you see United States to Japan literally covers the entire globe or the entire spectrum of 24 hours. So you as the project manager need to find out a way and assess it to be suitable to maximize participation and engagement from your stakeholders and sponsors. OK, now what could be a potential way to enable this? So let's go through the options one by one. Option A, hire a freelancer to create a state of art slide deck to create an impact during the meeting. This is totally, totally incorrect, guys, right? So hiring a freelancer, creating a state of art slide deck, 
to create an impact during the meeting but does it really ensure that you will get the maximum participation or the maximum representation out of the stakeholders who are situated across the width from united states to japan definitely not right you might be having a dazzling presentation but in the end you might not be having any audience who will be participating in that presentation right so that is totally incorrect i hope none of you have selected this option a let's look at option b review the meeting agenda and share it with the stakeholders and sponsors for feedback okay let's hold this option for now we need to come back to it let's look at option c verify attendance of all the required participants and send reminders now this is a passive way of problem solving right as i was talking about in question number one or question number two that in the pmp exam always look for actively managed ways of problem solving now verifying attendance through a meeting attendance tracker okay you can use that to track the attendance of whether some party has accepted the meeting or declined the meeting or uh, let's say accepted as tentative or not okay if we are working in an office environment we use microsoft teams we know that tracking attendance is not a problem okay and sending reminders is also not a problem you can reply to all and send the reminders to the participants etc etc but think about it that if you are doing a meeting in a time which is like let's say midnight for united states and let's say midday for for japan uh, it might not be okay to assume that everyone from united states or japan will be able to participate in the meeting so verifying attendance is a very passive way of approaching this problem sending reminders is also very passive way of approaching this problem right you should look at more options which will be giving you ideas on how this could be managed actively okay so for that reason option c is out of the table let's look at option d review the calendars for all the participants to identify preferred meeting times and preferences now we are talking right so what you are saying here is i will review the calendars for all the participants and will finalize a preferred meeting time and preference based on the geographical location of that person okay as far as possible or as far as reasonably practicable and the best part about this option is by using this approach you are actively trying to acknowledge the problem first and trying to find a solution to it okay you are reviewing calendars you are reaching out to the sponsors and stakeholders to identify their preferred meeting times the preferences with which they want to come to the meeting so for example some stakeholders can say that look i need to have your slide deck 24 hours before the meeting because i need to go through it okay as a pre read etc etc okay and someone may be okay just by coming into the meeting straight away and providing feedback okay so the individual preferences are something that should definitely need to be considered while you are doing such a high profile meeting where your sponsors are located across the globe okay so option d looks like the correct option but anyways let's come back to option b for a second review the meeting agenda and share it with the stakeholders and sponsors for feedback now this is a pre meeting activity right so this is not something that will help help you increase or help you guarantee participation now when a sponsor is providing feedback on the meeting agenda that doesn't necessarily mean that the sponsor is at ease for attending that meeting as well okay so that is not something which can be assumed so reviewing the meeting agenda sharing it with the stakeholders getting feedback everything is fine but these are pre meeting or pre event activities right so in that sense option b definitely falls off the table because it is not giving me confidence that by doing this i will be able to find a suitable way to what to my problem statement which is to maximize participation and engagement okay so option b is definitely incorrect because it doesn't solve my root problem and the correct answer to this question is option d which is to review the calendars for all the participants to identify preferred meeting times and preferences now am i solving the problem 100% by doing this questionable right but is this the best answer out of the three options provided a b c and d that is definitely true okay so it is very important also that for your pmp exam please keep this in mind that you are not expected to select the 100% best answer but you are expected as a exam aspirant to select the correct answer which is best among the four options provided to you okay and that is even more trickier so doing these kind of exercises with me monthly will give you that opportunity to develop that skill set right so the correct answer to this question is option d if you are finding this practice session helpful guys make sure you subscribe to my channel pmp with ray for more such videos for your pmp exam preparation okay subscribing to this channel doesn't cost you anything but it really helps with extending the reach of this channel to other pmp aspirants like you and now let's move on to question number four
So question number four, guys, the drill will remain the same. Please read the question and try to answer it before we solve this together. OK, you can pause the video here if you wish to. All right, so let's get started. First round of user testing results have come to the product owner for review, right? So if you are into agile projects or if you are into basic project management, I can assume that you know what is a user testing. OK, let's move on. There are mixed opinions about the user testing since the feedback is mixed. Some users have loaded the prototype. Now the word of the day is loaded. Please let me know in the comment section below. What does that mean? Or else please follow me for this entire question and we'll eventually come back to this and get to know what is the meaning of this term loaded. OK, some users have loaded the prototype. However, many users have complained about the missing features, bad user experience and unnecessary complexities within the prototype. Right. So what is happening here? So the first round of user testing for a product feature, which is sort of a prototype has come back for review to the product owner. Now, when the product owner is reviewing this prototype, he or she has noticed that there are two schools of thought. OK, one school of thought, which is a minority have uh, loaded the product. Now what loaded means? It means appreciated. OK, so some users have appreciated the product prototype saying that OK, all good, good stuff about it. However, majority of the users who use the prototype complained about what complained about missing features, bad user experience, unnecessary complexities, etc, etc. OK, so the majority of the feedback which has been received for this prototype testing or user testing per se was negative. Now the question is what could be inferred about the output of this user testing exercise? So there are four options provided. Now if you look at the four options, interestingly, there are two schools of thought, right? Option A and B says that the prototype was a success and they give two reasons, reason one and reason two about it. And option C and D is of the school of thought that the prototype was a failure. OK, and they also provide two reasoning about it. So reason one, reason two. So occasionally you will see such type of questions in your PMP exam and these are high difficulty level questions. OK, so it is good that we are solving this as a part of this month's exercise, but you need to select one option out of these four types right now. A good thing about this type of question is since there are two schools of thought, if using your learning for your entire PMP exam, if you are able to reject one school of thought, you are only left with two options. OK, so you are able to eliminate 50 percent of the options straight away from the table. OK, now if you put that into use now for that, you need to be very, very conversant about the entire theory and the syllabus of the PMP exam. You can definitely say that the prototype was definitely a success, guys. The prototype was never a failure. Now, why is that the case? Now, tell me one thing that what do you think is the intent of prototype? Is prototyping done with the intent of delivering the perfect product right at the first time? It is not right because that is the reason it is called prototype. It's called like let's say proof of concept, proof of principle, whatever you want to call it, right? Because in a prototype, there is bound to be mistakes. There are bound to be gaps which might come up in the product. And that is the entire intent of the prototype to test the product within a smaller user group before the rubber hits the road or the product actually goes into the market. So the more deficiencies, more challenges or let's say gaps which are identified in the product during the prototype stage, it is good for the product owner and good for the project rather than the product going into the market and then you are receiving customers customer complaints regarding some items which were not taken into consideration in product design. So prototyping is a very, very, very important aspect of product design and the more gaps and improvement opportunities which are identified during prototyping, the better it is for the overall project. So with that premise, we can definitely eliminate option C and option D, right? But anyways, let's look at the reasoning that has been provided for option C and option D. The prototype was a failure because so many negative feedback were received. Now we talk this, right? This is incorrect. It is good that negative feedback has been received. Received. It should have said that the prototype is success because so many negative feedbacks or improvement opportunities were identified, but it is not saying that. So option C is definitely incorrect. Let's look at option D. The prototype was a failure because the users did not understand the intent of the exercise. Now this is random stuff guys, right? The users are definitely not 
going into a user testing with the mindset that okay i have to say good good things about it or let's say i have to always talk positively about the product or i need to understand everything a to z about a user testing exercise no it's not the case okay sometimes these user testing can be blind testings as well so the users will not be knowing whether they are using a product which has already been launched in the market or whether they are using a product which is yet to be launched in the market right so these are called blind testings okay so please go back and google the term blind testing for prototyping right so that is definitely not the case so option d is also incorrect let's look at option a and option b because that is the correct school of thought with which we are sticking to for this question option a says that the prototype was a success because there were appreciation received from some users okay and let's look at option b the prototype was a success because this will allow to enable a more user focused backlog perfect this is what we were looking at right and that is the intent of prototyping that you have a user focused backlog and that means user focused action list or improvement ideas which you need to work on for the final delivery of the product and that is the entire intent of doing a prototyping or doing a user testing with a prototype just because you have received some good feedback about the prototype doesn't make the prototype successful so for option a even if the first part of the option is correct the second part is incorrect guys right so the correct answer to this question is option b the prototype was a success definitely because there were so many improvement ideas that were highlighted during the prototype right and this will help the agile team to create a more user focused backlog to be included in the next sprint or the next iteration so the correct answer is option b i hope you are finding this exercise helpful right Remember, the target is to get all the five out of five questions correct, okay? However, the minimum expectation is to get at least four out of the five questions correct. So here comes the fifth and the final question. Okay, so question number five, guys. Please read the question and try to answer it before we solve this together, right? You can pause the video here if you wish to. Okay, so let's get started. Now, why I have included this question is just to bust that myth which exists with the PMP exam aspirants that okay there are no numericals in the PMP exam I keep on getting questions from my students that okay Ray, do I need to prepare for numericals in the PMP exam will there be mathematics question quote-unquote mathematics question in the PMP exam right so this is a classic example of a mathematics question so-called if you want to call it for the PMP exam and you can definitely expect such kind of questions in your PMP exam which is less mathematics but more about interpreting the results of a project management tool which is a probability impact matrix as you are seeing here right so i'll let you to solve this question first yourself before we solve this together as part of this exercise so please pause the video here take a shot at it before we find a solution together right so let's get started during a risk review meeting in a project the following five risks were identified by the team arrange the risks in order in which the project manager is expected to manage them one being the lowest and five being the highest for these ratings which have been provided as part of the probability impact metrics now i'm assuming guys that you know what a probability impact matrix is and what is the use of the probability impact metrics in risk assessment if not please go back and study the pmb okay or study the process group practice guide or whichever book you are following if you're following my 35 pdu course i have covered that in that course as well but whatever is the scenario, you should be knowing about the probability impact matrix as a PMP exam aspirant. Now you need to rank these risks, risk number one, two, three, four and five in the order in which the project manager is expected to manage them. So the highest risk will come first followed by the risk with the least probability of occurring and impact, right? So how to solve this question? It is very, very, very basic guys, right? Because in the probability impact metrics, what you do is you multiply the probability with the impact to arrive at a number and basis that number, you categorize the risk. The more higher the number is, the riskier it is, the more higher the number is, that risk needs to be mitigated at the earliest, okay? So let's look at risk number one there could be delays in shipment from the supplier warehouse sorry about this typo guys it's not the it is there so there could be delays in shipment from the supplier warehouse the probability is two the impact is three so what is the risk score of this uh, risk item it is two multiplied by three which is equal to six right let's look at the next risk the supplier can submit variations for extra scope items let's say these are let's say change requests we can say which needed to be dealt with for the product packaging 
and the risk rating is probability one impact four so one multiplied by four the overall risk level of this item is four okay let's look at risk number three the product packaging does not look attractive on the market shelf that is a risk the probability is three which is moderate impact is very high which is five so three times five which is 15 okay right let's look at risk number four the exception funding request which is let's say the change request of one hundred thousand dollars is still pending for approval and the risk rating is probability four multiplied by impact four which is four multiplied by four which is 16 right let's look at risk number five there is a potential delay of five weeks for this phase of the project so that's a risk in schedule the probability is five and the impact is two which means the impact is low which means that there is still flexibility within the schedule to absorb this risk okay so five multiplied by two so that's 16 right and for risk number five that is five multiplied by two that's ten now you tell me guys what level of mathematics you need to solve this question right very basic not even second or third standard mathematics right so this is the level which you need to expect for your pmp exam in terms of interpreting some tool which is so called a numerical tool to arrive at the right answer so the correct answer to this question i hope you have identified by now is option a which is the fourth risk which is the highest followed by the third risk which is the second highest followed by the fifth risk which is the third highest followed by the first risk which is the fourth highest and followed by the last risk which is the fifth highest okay so the correct answer to this question is four three five one two and this is the level with which you should address these risks starting from the most riskier item and moving to the less risky item okay now when it comes to mathematical problem or numerical problems in your pmp exam you can expect such type of questions in your pmp exam where you need to interpret a numerical tool per se in the project management body of knowledge and apply it in a project management scenario to arrive at a decision right so the correct answer to this question is option a so that's the end of the quiz guys let me know in the comment section below how much you were able to score okay i'd be very interested to know that also if you have scored less don't get demotivated okay you just need a bit more practice and a thorough analysis of your mistakes so that you get to know about your knowledge gaps now, to help you practice more and eventually get better, I am linking here the entire playlist of our monthly practice sessions for the PMP exam questions and answers. Please check if you have missed any of the monthly sessions and make sure you practice with me in those sessions as well. I'll see you there.